Israel-Iran War News Today. The Third Eye. A Unique Cold War. New Delhi, the recent drone and missile attacks between Iran and Israel, the Iranian president's visit to Pakistan, and the fallout of Israel-Hamas conflict that sparked pro-Palestinian protests in the U.S. and elsewhere in the Muslim world have put the Middle East in flux. This raises the question of how regional religious divides are affecting the ideologically demarcated Cold War between the U.S.-led West and the China-Russia axis. Israel, which opposes Bashar al-Assad, the Alawite president of Syria, launched a missile attack on Damascus on April 1, hitting Iran's diplomatic mission and killing seven Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corp officers. After Iran fired missiles at Israel on April 13, the Iron Dome defense system primarily shot them down. A few days later, on April 18, Israel launched a drone attack on Isfahan that apparently did not kill anyone. Both sides showed restraint due to Iran weighing in on U.S. support for Israel and Israel sensing international criticism of Israeli Defense Forces civilian deaths in Gaza. The Joe Biden administration considered ways to reconcile its support for Israel with its efforts to address Islamophobia that could result from the Israel-Hamas war after Hamas' October 7 terror attack on Israel. Meanwhile, pro-Palestinian protests are taking place in the U.S., notably on university campuses. Though vulnerable to the historical Shia-Sunni divide, Iran and Pakistan, two neighboring Islamic countries, have maintained a cautious, peaceful relationship that could survive the January missile attacks. After the Sunni Islamic extreme outfit Jaish al-Adl invaded Sistan, Iran fired missiles on its base in Balochistan, prompting a symbolic military strike from Pakistan. Iran was becoming increasingly pulled to the China-Russia alliance having supplied drones to Russia during the Ukraine-Russia war. Pakistan opposes Zionism and has no diplomatic connections with Israel. Pakistan has a strong strategic alliance with China, but it mediated the Doha talks between the Taliban and the U.S., which resulted in the withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan and the reinstallation of the Taliban Emirate in Kabul in 2021. Pakistan is a prominent member of the Organization of Islamic Conference, OIC and close to Saudi Arabia, its chairman. Sunni radicals hate the U.S. and Shiites and would oppose Pakistan's alliance with them. Pakistan is allied with radical groups like the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS, which are hostile to the U.S., Saudi Arabia, and Iran's Ayatollah regime. Iran knows that Pakistan does not harbor faith-based hatred toward Iran, therefore friendship with Pakistan helps it preserve its Middle East hold against Israel. Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi's three-day visit to Islamabad from April 22 in the context of the Israel-Hamas conflict, particularly after the exchange of missile attacks, is significant for the Middle East and geopolitics, which is drifting toward a new Cold War between the U.S.-led West and the China-Russia axis. It's interesting how religion-based alignments in the Muslim world and Middle East are bolstering worldwide political polarization. The Iranian president desired Pakistan's backing in its conflict with Israel, even though both countries knew the U.S. would oppose trade pacts. Israel's extended military action in Gaza has reignited the Zionist Islamic conflict. The anti U.S. nature of Shia fanaticism and Iran's pro Assad stance in Syria have drawn Iran closer to Russia and China. It's intriguing that the U.S. and Russia worry about Islamic radicalization. The U.S. should have learned that while banking on Pakistan for post-Soviet Afghanistan, it had made a strange attempt to distinguish between good terrorists and bad terrorists, which only increased the threat of faith-based terror from radicalized forces. The U.S. had tried to distinguish between Islamic radical outfits that considered it their main enemy and PAC-ISI rear terrorist groups used in cross-border terrorism against India, but it may have realized that Pakistan was also sheltering Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. After Israeli action in Gaza killed more than 30,000 civilians in Palestine, President Biden's White House worries that pro-Muslim demonstrations in the U.S. and abroad may weaken the U.S. position in the Middle East and give Russia and China an advantage. By convincing the Islamic world that jihad was not necessary to resolve political concerns, the U.S. had to isolate radicalized elements. This task requires U.S.-India collaboration. The rise of religion in international politics and faith-based violence in many theaters threatens democracy. 
the connection of Israel with the U.S. has fueled extremist Sunni and Shiite fundamentalist enmity toward the former. If Israel escalated its military assault in Gaza and killed civilians, pro-U.S. Arab countries like Saudi Arabia and Egypt may suffer. India maintains an independent stance in the Ukraine-Russia armed conflict and the Israel-Hamas conflict, favoring peaceful discussions that address Ukraine and Russia's security concerns and support a two-state solution in Palestine. Jihad adherents in the Middle East have pushed revivalism to the extent of stirring up Karajites' historical memory and adding to Shia-Sunni enmity. Shun them and discreetly help those who successfully established Islam as a peaceful religion in the region. India would support all of that, but it worries that Pakistan would independently promote a peace narrative that Indo-Pak talks should resume. India should note that Pakistani Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif and Saudi ruler Prince Mohammed bin Salman's joint statement at Mecca on April 7 stressed the importance of dialogue between Pakistan and India to resolve their outstanding issues, especially the JNK dispute, to ensure peace and stability in the region. On Iran's president's recent visit to Islamabad, a more detailed joint statement recommended resolving Kashmir through dialogue and peaceful means based on the will of the people of that region and in accordance with international law. India can easily remind the world that Pakistan harbored terrorists who attacked India on its land and that talks and terrorism could not go together. However, Pakistan constantly tried to portray Kashmir as a Muslim issue to get support in the Islamic world. India's foreign policy of bilateral or multilateral friendships that benefited security, economic development, and world peace fits well in current geopolitics, where ideological and religion-based divisions were creating new alignments and uncertainties. Because of their perfect consensus on the China issue, the US and India, the two largest democracies, must maintain their natural partnership. The U.S.'s support of Pakistan as a potential ally necessitates India's deepening cooperation with Russia and the Central Asian republics on the threat of radicalization that Pakistan was fueling by supporting Islamic radicals on its soil. India must independently combat anti-India lobby-encouraged minority secession and protect its internal security. India's bilateral friendships should continue to focus on technology improvement for economic development and defense. As an international power, India must assert itself on global peace and human progress. It should also be clear about opposing foreign meddling in democratic India's domestic affairs.